Hey everyone, I'm Redbeard the Hippie here with the one, the only Cash Hollister, local icon, man of faith, and man who has not changed his style forever, but still is in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we were just talking, and you've been doing this for a little over 20 years. It's, it's, it's close to 30. It's, close to 30. it's, it's crazy, but yeah, 30. But 20 years of doing festival jams in Salina. Yeah, so like, yeah, doing that. Um, yeah, being in the local scene, it's been about more like 20 years. And uh, obviously you've been around for a while and have stayed true to yourself on your style of music. Yeah. So uh, how did you make that choice rather than doing like what's popular where it's the, you know, talking about women or drugs or... I don't know, I think one of the things that obviously drew me to hip hop was the fact that you can kind of just tell your story. Like anybody can tell their story. Um, and being from here in Salina, Kansas, I kind of just wanted to rap what I knew. And what I did not know was gang life. What I did not know was really the streets. Like I'm a pastor's kid, first and foremost. Um, yeah, like I'm a mama's boy <laughs> from the north end of town. Um, and you know been been a believer the majority of my life so like a lot of what i know i just kind of rap and so i chose to stay that way just to be true and to be authentic i think one of the the greats are normally authentic like they kind of just tell what they need to tell from their vantage point and so either you rock with it or you don't but the ones that do i appreciate it i yeah i was kind of going through my head just now like all the the ones that I see are the icons or the legends and it's like they've rap what they know and mm -hmm. some of them either they get the success and they can't rap about certain things anymore right. or they're still in that lifestyle right. and uh, so let's see pastor's kid I know you don't cuss in any of your <laughs> stuff uh -huh. which I think is really cool because it does make a challenge for from a writing aspect because you can put in, you know, any obscenity mm -hmm. and just kind of make it work in there. And yeah. does I always say, I always say that like, um, you know, believers, especially like Christian rappers or rappers that are Christian or whatever you want to call it. Like, um, it's, it's like doing push-ups on our knuckles. It's like, you can do push-ups like everybody else, but it's tougher to do them on your knuckles. But if you get in a regular push-up contest with somebody, you got to beat. Oh so, yeah. Like that's that's kind of how I've always approached it. It's like it's it's difficult. It's the challenge because you can't do what they're doing. You you're forced to do it on your knuckles. But if you get in the ring with somebody and you got to do you know regular push-ups, you got them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, because I know uh, one of the artists that I listen to, Corey Taylor, wrote an album where I think there was two, maybe three cuss words. He said that was the hardest thing he's. <laughs> yeah ever written and he kind of did it to challenge himself yeah, so it's a challenge it's definitely a challenge but for me i think it's just natural because that's just not i mean i choose not to do that so um just in regular conversation so um, yeah i i don't think i've ever heard you cuss <laughs> and i think maybe the only time if it's referring to the location of hell uh -huh. in through scripture or uh -huh. something like that but you're not just out there saying whatever no i mean and you know those that do it man that's cool that's to, to cool. each their own you're right to each their own uh so you kind of took some time off just mm -hmm. from personal choice or yeah just focusing on uh focusing on the family i got three girls so um they're you know right now 13 12 8 so they're at that age um where <laughs> they drive you crazy yeah, exactly. They need to go everywhere and they do everything. So um, it's definitely been, uh, yeah, it's definitely, it was time. Like I had been like going in go mode for like, man, close to maybe a decade. And then, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so like, it just took a, I was like, man, let me just take some time to, to you know, fall back a bit. And um, I was still doing things here and there, kind of stuff behind the scenes and open myself to like doing videography and, you know, film and stuff like that that's been cool um editing audio editing like that's just a passion that i've kind of picked up um and that's kind of supplemented what i needed to do 
what I was doing, I guess. And, uh, Adds a different layer to what you're able to do. Right, right. So it's it's been good. I think it's been it's been refreshing to kind of fall back um, and not do a whole lot. Did it help with the writing being able to write easier? Like when you took the if you're trying to if you're always in go mode where you're always trying to just I got to get that next song out or I got to get that next one out mm -hmm. and you did it were you burnt out and then coming back did it help the writing process in that aspect so I think part of it was I, I think I, I went through a season of like writer's block like I couldn't think of anything I really couldn't write anything I wasn't I didn't feel like anything I was writing was was good um, so I think just yeah experiencing other things other cultures other genres um, appreciating that that's what kind of brought me back to like writing um, doing things like you know taking uh, writing prompts like in the book of writing prompts and like journals and stuff like that like things that I had normally not done um, but just some different ways to inspire myself and um, to push myself to, to write something um, and I feel like now finally I have that there's yeah there's been some personal life experiences as well that's kind of helped push that you know whether I wanted it to happen or not but um, yeah Hey, are you one of the writers where you get the beat and then you sit down and you construct the song yeah. around it? You don't have like pre-written stuff where you kind of... I mean, it's, it's a mixture of both. Like for me, I'm one of those people that have notes and letters or, you know, paper everywhere. Because I like, I'll just write. <laughs> you jot of, stuff yeah, down or Whatever's idea. in my head, if it's not in my voice recorder, then I'm writing it down. Like, okay, I got two lines, boom. And then, like, I'm looking for it, you know, everywhere if I'm if I need to. But yeah, for the most part, if I get a beat, then I'll uh, I'll get that, look at it. And then you piece the song around your like now you piece the song around it, or you have that line where you're like, oh, that's gonna be perfect right, right here. And then you build right through that versus just because I know some people, some artists have the ability where they can set down and they hear the beat and they'll just go bang out the song. Yeah, Doesn't it's matter. Right for me. That's rare. That's a rare thing for me. I think for me, it's uh, I get the beat. I kind of come up with the concept, and then go from there. And I'm sort of dyslexic in my writing. Like I never write from the top. Like sometimes I'll like <laughs> third verse first. Yeah. So maybe second verse first, and then end at the first verse. That's kind of my normal pattern. But it just depends on the beat. And then uh, the songs that if you do hear the beat and you construct the whole thing right there, are those more special to you yes. or? Yes. Because it was yeah. just something that hit that moment and struck that chord, and you're just like, okay, this is what it's. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I know from doing like my music stuff, that was how I'd construct song. I had to wait for them to get all the music, and then I'd. There were some I'd write to it, but most of the time I had notes, and it's like I'd just scrolling through, and it's like I'd find those couple lines and be like, right. oh, that's how I'm constructing this song, or this right. is the idea that I'm having. Yeah. And uh. Like obviously with you being busy and getting back into it, I know you're like the DJ here today mm -hmm. and you do DJing at the, the football stuff. Yeah, the Liberty, Sign of Liberty, yeah. And then uh, you recently met, is it Drax or Dax? Dax, yeah. Dax mm -hmm. in Salina, Kansas yeah, to do a music the, video yeah. shoot. Yeah. Shout out to Logan, he made that happen, yeah. Yeah, because I saw that picture and was just like, oh man, that is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> Cause I, I like him. Yeah, Dax is cool, man. Um, like he used to live out in Wichita, so that's kind of how I knew. Really? Him. Yeah, his parents live in Wichita still. So he he used to he used to hoop at a Sunrise Christian Academy down there, and so that's kind of the Wichita connection. And then he, you know, honed his skills here, and then moved uh, moved out um, originally from Canada, but yeah, he's got Wichita connection. So when he was here, he was there to see his parents, but he came up here. Because obviously Logan Mai is the director of uh, I forget what was the name of the song. It was uh, How It Is to Be a Man or something like that. Yeah, and which so, I've I've heard yeah. bits and snippets of it, and I follow him on social media. Yeah. And, and so like yeah, so the director Logan's from here, um, and so he just brought him here, and uh, we kind of linked up and talked. Um, yeah, it's a good guy. That's that's really cool because I know I, like I said I saw it on social media and just kind of was like oh man that is so cool. Yeah. yeah. Cause it is kind of funny the certain artists that'll you meet just coming through here like i've seen numerous bands and artists and there's still a few on the list of 
which are odd. Like I would love to see Bone Thugs in Harmony. Right. And that's that's like my personal go-to because that's what got me into rap music. And there's, you know, some of those I just find are interesting just to see. Yes. Yes. And then, uh, so. how would you say that right, you're Jasper. you're influenced on, like, what? artist influence your music style um i'm like i'm a lyrical person so like i have lyricists i think uh biggie jay-z those are probably like the biggest uh, influences so like east coast rap um i would say bits and pieces of rock him um yeah so like you know most def common black dot from the roots like works the five nine like those type of lyricists Eminem, like, those were the ones that kind of inspired me a lot, and they, they still inspire me to this day, like, you know, I like, I like some of the, the stuff, you know, more of the vibey stuff um, that's out now, but, like, anybody who can rap, you get my attention, like, ten times out of ten, so. Yeah, I, the list that you said is a pretty impressive list. Yeah. Especially, isn't Rock Kim, Rock Kim's, he's religious now. Or, it's always been okay. Yeah, yeah, because I remember a uh, song like early two thousands that got me into him. Mm-hmm. I did own a couple Rock Him albums, so nice. Nice. yeah. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm not just this metalhead guy. Like I I appreciate all styles of music. And, portfolio, nice. Okay. Well, because then it also adds to, like you said, uh, things you can draw where you like this rock band's doing it this right. way. So you right. get. A lyrical pattern right. from that where you're like oh I can do this yeah. here or uh, yeah and like and, and you respect you can respect different genres without having to be like fans or really even immersed in it like I appreciate like country is not my thing but I appreciate good songs like I'm just a, I'm a fan of great songs period so it doesn't matter the genre like I think T-Bone Burnett is like one of the greatest songwriters you know around i'm not necessarily listening to oh brother we're out there the soundtrack all the time but i re- i appreciate that like that's really good music yeah stuff he did with the civil war is good stuff you know what i mean so like yeah if it's good it's good yeah and if it inspires or creates or hits a certain chord with you where you're just like oh yeah I, I got the goosebumps from that one or yeah. you know yeah. that one took like uh their diabolic orange monkey sent me one of their new songs and it literally took, it hit a parent note in me mm-hmm. and it took me four hours to get back into being me. Yeah. Like it was that powerful of a song. Wow. So like seeing those where you're just like, oh, and I was at work and I'm like trying to hold back tears from it. <laughs> and you know, it's just one of those where it's like, oh, yeah. but no, very rarely do you see musicians that try to, like I know some try to hit that note or others are just trying to put stuff out just to put it out to still be relevant right. are you worried about why well, obviously not like it's you do what you do and if people like it then people like it if they don't then yeah. to each their own right exactly all right we're back again because you had to go do djing stuff yes uh how would you say that you stay grounded like pretty sure the kids keep you absolutely. humble and grounded absolutely Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I tell the story. Um, it just happened. So um, I was at I was performing at Wichita River Fest. I was opening it up for uh, Shaggy. And um, so I just got done. It's about 4,000 people. People were starting to come in. And so I just got done. 4,000 people. Man, adrenaline was flowing, pumping. And the first thing that my eight year old daughter asked is, Can we get something to eat? I'm hungry. <laughs> like, I just got off the stage. I haven't even, you know, even processed nothing. Drilling is still pumping. And, like, she's the first person to greet me, hugs me, and then asks to go eat. So I'm like, yeah, that grounds. That grounds you. Like, all right. Like, you can't even really, you know, feel great about yourself. You're <laughs> like, just, all right, yes, we'll get and, something here. To say and obviously them. they don't care that you're they don't care. Cash Hollister, Not your enough. dad. and Yeah. And, this, uh, and they need food. Yeah. So that's because for some reason they're hungry. Yeah. All, all the, the time. time. All the time. And at the worst times, possible too. Yeah. Um, I gotta, but, I gotta meet the one rapper I've been waiting twenty years for. Uh, Dad, I gotta pee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, them. 
<laughs> but then uh, also just having a good circle of uh, family and friends too. Like they, they keep me grounded. And, um, they, they have no problems, you know, telling me, you know, when I'm off, um, you know, even musically, like I have some, you know, musical friends that um, I've had for years. And, you know, we've had that rapport to where we can kind of just tell each other, hey, this is good, or you might need to tighten up on, um, tighten up on this here, or take that they, out. They don't sugarcoat anything. No sugarcoat, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, and, I've, and I cherish that. I'm, I'm really thankful for that. Because that's probably the one thing that you always see artists and things like that where they get those people around them that are going to say, no, nah, no, nah, man, that's that's good, yes, that's man. good. Yeah, a bunch of yes men. Nah, I definitely have some no men in my circle. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm appreciative of that. So. And they're not afraid to. Yeah, not at all. No, nah, man, that ain't. <laughs> no, not at all. Yes, man. Yeah, those those are always good things to have. Yeah. And it, and it is fun with having kids because they – they don't care no. that you're those that you're this yeah. other person or yeah. people know you it's yeah and, and while like you want to be like their favorite rapper like actually knowing um knowing their taste like it's been it's been cool too to kind of just see like like what my girls listen to and you know stuff like that so oh yeah like i'm i'm diehard metalhead if there's yeah. metal on i'm listening to it yeah. I got my rap that I listen to, right. but then like my kids will bring me, hey dad, check out this song, and it's like this electronic beat or yeah. this right. industrial electronic music, and that's the stuff they're into, and yeah. I let them listen to what they want to. And right. Yeah, Brooklyn is, uh, like I named Brooklyn Brooklyn because I have an obsession with rappers from Brooklyn. Brooklyn doesn't listen to rap. So, you know, like, she listens to a little bit of it, but she, that's not her thing. She's definitely a pop, you know, she listens to K-pop, listens, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. all right. Which is, but, but it works, but it works. Which is always fun to just watching them grow into their own people, too. Exactly. And that's what, that's what, that's what I want, so. Yeah, Brooklyn has a pretty good group of rappers that came out of that area exactly. so exactly so um because that'd be like jay-z biggie most deaf um is let's see. Nas in that no Nas is queens Nas is queens i, I at least had the same you're city. in new york yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you're in new york <laughs> but, city okay but, new yeah. york in general had yeah Bro but brooklyn's got yeah big l um yeah all brooklyn so yeah see i i, I know a little bit of a little bit <laughs> But uh, also, like, when it comes to rap music, I know what I like with that style of music, and if it doesn't fit into what I I mean, I'll still give it a shot, but right. if it's not it, for me... It's I, not for you, yeah. And I, I learned a long time ago, it's a whole lot easier to say, hey, look, that's not my taste, than to bash an artist. Exactly. Because then they'll put out that one song, and then you're, you know, listening to it, and I thought you didn't like that guy. Yep, yeah. Right, then you're looking crazy. Yeah. Or you, you look like a fool and then trying to double back and backtrack. Right, and, right. You know, it's it's a whole lot easier to right. not talk negative. Right. Hey, what's up? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean that. Uh, no, you're all right. That's, that's the advantage of live interviews. It's always interesting. <laughs> I had a guy on a motorcycle one time stop and tell a band they liked them while we were doing an interview and then drove off oh, yeah. so but yeah this has definitely been interesting and it's been a pleasure talking to you yeah, i appreciate you taking time out of your Long overdue, man. busy schedule yeah. Yeah. yeah 